Imagine being able to take a video you created and convert it into something like this. Well, with Kling 2.6's motion control, you can now bring in or record your own video and very easily apply another image to it to create something very unique and very creative. Now this is not new technology. It's actually been around for a little while now within the AI video space, but I just wanted to check out what Kling 2.6 can do. So we're gonna dive deep and see the different settings and what it can do, but also compare it to some of the other models that are out there. So you can use this not only for just creating simple motion videos, you can also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking like I am here and apply a different image to it to get different effects. Now in order to check this out and see how it works, I'm gonna be jumping into Open Art, which is actually the sponsor of today's video and there's a link in the description as they have Kling 2.6 and a few other motion control models within their interface. But I want to push this model by giving it something difficult. So a little bit of movement, something with a bit of motion blur. So I've got this boxing video I'm going to try out. So I'm in open art and I'm in the image generation section. And if I come across, I've generated four images using Nano Banana Pro, which I think could work quite well for the video. So what I'm going to do is head over to the video tab. If I scroll down the left here, you'll see motion sync video. If I click on that, you'll notice up here on a model, we have Kling. 2.6 as well as 01, Runway Act 2 and Open Art Motion. So we're going to start with Kling 2.6 to explore what it's capable of. Now I can choose uh, a character. If I click here, one of my characters or one of the characters by Open Art. But for now, I'm actually going to focus on an image. So I can use one of the images I just generated. So I click that instead of going to upload. So I can't upload an image. I go to history. I'm going to choose this image here. Confirm. Now it shows it because it kind of matches the framing of the girl compared to the video that I'm also about to use. So I have this video here of a boxer, just sort of like shadow sparring or shadow boxing. I'm gonna to go to select video, upload. I have my video here, I click open. So now I have the image that I wanna use and the video. So I'm gonna try and put the motion from this video into this image. Now, I could choose to keep my original sound on. So if you're talking, you would say yes. I'm actually just going to leave it on no because this is more just a motion video. And we have different levels of reference control, like exact, partial, video mode. We have standard or pro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically describe what I see in the scene. So a cyberpunk girl is shadow boxing in the street. Now you can leave this blank if you want to. And obviously standard and pro, pro is the higher level of video. And motion reference control means if we have it on exact, it will try to reference the video exactly. Partial gives it a little bit more flexibility. And we're gonna see the difference of all these uh, different settings here in a minute. But first I'm going to create this video with this reference by clicking the create button. And then we wait a few minutes for our video to render. And it's done a pretty good job. She looks like she's actually throwing. It looks like a bit of an animation. The background's a little bit still, but overall, if you match it up to the video we supplied, it's pretty much spot on. All his movements are all pretty much translated effectively into her movements. But that background is a bit still, but let's try a few more settings to see what we can make happen with this video. So I'm gonna move from exact to partial motion to see what impact it has. And you can see just how much that the video moves and changes when it doesn't rely so much on the source video. But we're gonna switch now from standard to Pro to see if the quality is any better. And we go from 720p on standard to 1080p on Pro. Still a bit of movement. This one's a little bit more balanced than the last one. And now we're gonna try exact while keeping the Pro level of quality on. And what we get looks okay at the start because it's a little bit funny. The background goes a little bit crazy. But uh, overall, I think the first video was the best. So that was a little bit of a mixed bag there, but the first video looked really good. Although there wasn't a lot of motion in the background, I think if you really tweak your prompt, you could probably maybe improve it a little bit if you really wanted to. But also I think it's just a matter of trying a few different uh, settings until you get the result you want. And sometimes standard is a better job than pro, even though the resolution isn't quite there, but you also have like a video upscaler on open art if you're using that to create these videos. But overall, I think that, uh, it really got the motion portion of it pretty much spot on. The person who was throwing the punches actually seemed to be the main thing that worked really well, while the background was a little bit of a roll of the dice. So definitely something to look at in your prompt, as well as maybe even consider if you have a background that is probably gonna be impacted in some way if there's a bit of movement going on there. 
But let's try a different video, something of someone dancing, there's a little bit of camera movement. We're still trying to really push this thing to its limit. So when I go back into Open Art, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to select a character. I'm going to choose my Shaolin Bob character and generate some videos using this dancing video to see how that turns out as well. Now this is the exact video and this is where you can see some of the weaknesses. We've got a different aspect ratio, different framing, and we lose the monk in some of these shots because of the camera movement of the original video. However, when we go to partial, it focuses more on the character and keeps the framing of the image. So something to consider when choosing, especially if you look at the original video, you can see how much it's moving around, which means it's not probably the best choice for this kind of image. But again, by using partial, we're able to get that focus working pretty well. So I'm satisfied with this result here, except for the fact that it didn't do anything with the character other than use the character image. So this is the character image that has been used for the video. So I'm actually thinking better off creating an image with the character to use as a video. So I did another test. And since the framing was better on the image, the video looks a little bit better when using the exact function. And all these videos I've tried with the monk have been on pro, I also want to mention. But when you go back to partial, it keeps the camera a little bit more still. So it depends on what you're trying to prioritize. These are simple options you can choose from. But check out the little details of his facial expression as he moves. Also the way the cloth and his clothing bounce around, it just adds a little bit more realism to it. And even that parallax background where things are moving back and forth, it does a great job of pulling this image apart and turning it into something with a bit of depth. So those are two things to keep in mind is that the aspect ratio and the framing of the image really do make a difference depending on which option you go with. But you can also do things like reframe. You can also simply use Nano Banana or something to edit the image, to zoom in, zoom out. So you've got a few options there within the AI to really get the image set before you apply it to your video. But I do want to test this a little bit further. I'm going to try actually mixing the framing up a little bit further, just sort of emphasize and further test this, but also try a different subject to see how well that uh, Kling 2.6 handles it with the motion that we give it. But I decided to keep running with this video because I wanted to further emphasize and test the framing as well as trying it out on an animal. So I got one image of a monkey wearing sunglasses, which is full body, but then I decided to go for another one, which was more of a portrait. So I tested the two out to see how well Kling's motion control could handle them. So we have exact, and again, this looks pretty solid because we have that framing, it works out pretty well, but we do cut him off a little bit here and there. Going back to partial, and there's a little bit of movement, and it's actually a much nicer video. It hasn't been as still with the image as it was before. But if I switch back to the portrait style image, so this image here, how well did it handle that when it is cropped in? And again, we've got a little bit of a mess when we're using exact because the image is just not framed up to suit but we've got such a good result when switching to partial. It almost looks like something you would see in a movie. It actually turned out exceptionally well. So definitely test both of these when making your videos. So if you're looking to optimize this process, the framing definitely counts. And of course, from there, you might get a bit of a feel for which option you want to go for. But overall, I think doing both is still probably going to be the best way to go because you can simply choose the one that works out the best depending on what you're doing. So a little bit of experimentation, you're not really going to get it right the first time. But let's just move on a little bit now to some comparisons because Runway Act 2 is one of the premier sort of motion control AI video models out there until this came out. So we're going to compare Kling 2.6 six to runway as well as the other open art model that is on the open art platform but coming back to this video here since i have it open in open art i can come down to reuse settings and i'm actually going to try these other models so i'm going to try runway act 2 and open art in motion so we've got runway act 2 and there's an expression intensity that i can play with but otherwise those are pretty much the settings i'm going to try keeping it at three and hit create. I'm also just going to bring it up a little bit and try a few different versions. We get this 720p video with lovely T-Rex arms and a dead arm <laughs> hanging off the back of her backpack. But I brought the intensity up to five and we've got a lot more happening in the background. The arms are still not quite right, but this is the best so far. But bring it back down to one, we get that dead arm hanging off again. And again, all these are 720p as opposed to the 1080p of Kling. But on top of that, I'm also going to come up and try Open Art Motion, which is their own model. And there's a few more settings. I'm going to go with 1080p since we're going to be comparing uh, the best of these models. Keeping the prompt, we have Character Guided or Video Guided. I'll try both of these to compare also. And the Video Guided looks not too bad. 
I would say it's not quite as sharp as Kling, but it does do the job quite well. I want to switch over to Character Guided. We get some funny morphing going on. So definitely not the best choice for this high motion video. Now, I do want to point out that Kling 2.6 is actually the cheapest model as well as the best really so far with this video. So to generate this using standard, it's 160 credits. If I switch to Pro, 240 credits. And this is using the open art system. But it's funny because if you compare that to Runway Act 2, you're 200 credits. So it's cheaper than the Pro version, but at a lower resolution. If you want the same resolution, it's actually more expensive. And then of course, going to open art, we've got 240 credits. But if I bring it up to 1080p, 320. Switching to video guided, however, does bring those credits down as well. So there are a few different levels to this, but overall, Kling seems to be the cheapest and the most reliable. So I generally recommend you're gonna to wanna to use that one first with your videos. But let's continue with the comparisons. Now I am going to test and compare lip sync soon as well. But before we do that, I wanted to go back to some of those other videos that we created like Shaolin and Bob and the Chimp and just compare those as well against Runway and Open Art but there was actually an issue that Runway did not detect the face when I tried it out with these particular videos. So the next few are pretty much just Kling 2.6 versus the open art motion model. Moving on to this video though, which we created with partial motion and pro using Kling 2.6, which looks pretty decent. I switch over to open art since Runway didn't work and what we get is not too bad. There's a weird blur at the bottom. Has the right motion, but framed a little too tight. So the framing does seem to count. But when I went to Video Guided, I got this weird almost dating video style ad with the glow, and then it just kind of fades off to something else. So I switched over to the more improved framing with Kling 2.6. Again, this is Partial Pro, and this looks pretty good from Kling. But when I switch to Open Art with Character Guided, what we get is actually also pretty good. I do prefer the overall sharpness and the overall motion of the Kling model, but this makes for a great alternative if it's not quite delivering what you want. Now, Video Guided also worked pretty well with Open Art here, but it's just not quite as sharp in some little areas, little blurs. And not quite as good, but still overall a decent video. Just doesn't really compare to the Kling version. But trying our Monk video, once again, Kling looking nice and sharp with the motion pretty solid. And even that camera motion, I actually find works pretty well. We go to the Character Guided Open Art video. And again, it's not quite as sharp, but it seems to follow pretty well. There's a few little details that tend to just morph a little bit. But overall, both that and the Video Guided seem to be solid models. But Kling seems to be just a little bit better at handling these types of videos. But now let's take a look at lip sync. And if we were to record ourselves talking, how well that works using Kling 2.6, because a lot of people out there who want to create content, but want to keep themselves like their faces private, this is the sort of thing that they're after. So I'm going to quickly have a look at open art. The process is more or less the same. And we're going to see how to create a video where you record yourself talking and convert it into something else. But when creating a video where you're going to be speaking, I have this image here, which is quite framed up like me, but I have this video from the introduction from earlier down here. Now I wanna make sure I keep the original sound on and then I'm gonna put it on pro and try and see which works better, exact or partial. And I'm just gonna leave the prompt blank to see how well it handles it. I hit create. Now what we get is decent, but it's definitely not perfect. Ocean videos. You can also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking like I am here and apply a different image to it to get different effects. For just creating simple motion videos, you can also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talk. Now, as you can see, both are actually pretty decent. So naturally I tried this image of the monkey with the sunglasses and some of the speech worked well, some of it didn't. So I'll play the video so you can see what I mean. For just creating simple motion videos, you can also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking like I am here and apply a different image to it to get different effects. The results were probably a little bit better with this Renaissance painting of an old man. For just creating simple motion videos, you can also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking like I am here and apply a different image to it to get different effects. But I don't think the effect translated as well to this cartoon Studio Ghibli image. For just creating simple motion videos, you can also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking like I am here and apply a different image to it to get different effects. Now, none of these are perfect, but they do work pretty well, and there's a big improvement in this technology, so I can definitely see why there'd be a lot of use cases for it. 
So you can see how well Kling 2.6 handles the talking head videos, the lip sync. So how does it actually compare against Runway Act 2 and the open art model? Keeping in mind that Runway Act 2 didn't quite work without a face being detected. So I'm guessing this is probably more of its specialty. So I wonder how well it compares against Kling 2.6. So we're going to use this image again for Runway. Starting off with an intensity of 1, we get a pretty decent result. For just creating simple motion videos. You can also do full lip sync videos. The lip sync I think is actually a little bit better but the movement on the chin doesn't quite work. So I bring the expression intensity up to three, and also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking like I am here. Nice natural dialogue again. However, I bring the intensity up to five on runway and it gets a little bit too expressive. Also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking like I am here and apply a different image to it. Also that chin piece seems to move and wobble around a bit so it's not really the best. For just creating simple motion videos, you can also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking. But to my surprise, zooming in up close, Kling does look a lot better than Runway. So I switched over to Open Art Character Guided and this didn't really turn out as I wanted. For just creating simple motion videos, you can also do full lip sync videos. But aside from the strange arm issue, it had very natural lip sync. So I tried video guided. This was a lot better. For just creating simple motion videos, you can also do full lip sync videos where you maybe record yourself talking like I am here and apply. But in my opinion, sometimes you get a good result from any of these but sometimes you also get poor results. So for the one I just showed you, it seems that Video Guided worked best for Open Art Motion. Exact seems to work best for Clean 2.6. Runway Act 2, it's almost like you don't want to have the expression too high. But there is one thing I will say that Kling beats them all at, and that is it has the crisper, sharper image compared to all the others. So you can see how if you're a filmmaker or a content creator, this tool really makes it a lot easier for you to create something really outstanding. It allows you to protect your privacy if you want to just create a persona that you want to use online or just special effects for short films without actually having to hire a special effects team. It's much more accessible to the public to be able to create really cool and really different video with a simple click of a button and a few images. But I highly recommend you check that out. Now you can go to Kling and check it out, but Open Art is where I recommend that uh, you go and check this out because they have a whole bunch of tools. It's just filled with different AI video tools, different video models, a whole bunch of image models, including Nano Banana Pro. You could basically use almost anything on this platform if you're looking to create AI media. But otherwise, that's the video for today, guys. And let me know your thoughts on what you saw in the videos today in the comments below. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon and have a great day.